Oh, and it's time. It's it finally time, time. It's time for the top cut, the battle that we've been all been waiting for. We are in the quarterfinals. This is where all the marbles are being rolled out on the floor for you to trip and fall on if you're not careful. And that's exactly what all our competitors here are going to set out to do for their opponents. Trip them up, make them fall with their teams and their strategies. But ultimately, in the end, like we said... It's for all the marbles. All the points are on the line here. So as we head into the top cut, Owen, tell me how you're feeling going forward. You know what? I'm feeling good going into the top cut. We see a lot of people that we did cast over before. Um, like Eric Luong finished first at the top with a 5-0 and record. And, he, and even though Olivia lost that game to um, to Eric and lost another game immediately right after, it still had enough uh, success to make it into the top cut. We also have Marcus Dion, Ashton Cox, who's a really big name, uh, Diego Aguari, who we're going to see on stream in just a second. Zane Yusuf, who we're also going to see on stream in just a second. Um, Ryan Lacetto, and then Jesse Romello. So, um, some pretty cool names. Uh, and, and I'm honestly, I'm pretty excited. Let's talk about the matchup, though, that we do have on stream today. It's four versus five. Uh, so, that would be Zayn Yusuf versus Diego Aguari. I, I got to say, we haven't taken a look too much at the teams. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to take a look right now. Let's take a look. Let's start with Zayn's team right now. So okay. we're seeing another Pelipper. This time is a Terra type steel. Of course, Drizzle mm -hmm. is going to be the optional choice. And Focus Sash running Tailwind, Hurricane, Weather Ball, and Wide Guard. We saw the utility that the Wide Guard could have right. against the Tornadus and Landorus lead before. Of course, there's other options that it could be useful for as well. But those were the two that come to mind. Yeah. Yeah, we also have Lando I and Tornadus I. So uh, two incarnate forms. Um, coming out for you. So that's, that's probably going to be a, like a solid lead for the mm. most part. If you're not going for the Pelipper lead, you might go for the both incarnate leads too. You also got a Moongus, Urshifu Rapid Strike, Incineroar. Uh, you got a lot of Pokemon that you could lead out with. Um, so it's, you know, pretty solid, pretty solid team. Let's look on the other side though. Uh, on Diego's team, you got Tornadoes, uh, Tornadus Incarnate, Urshifu Single Strike, Rega Wrap, Ursaluna, Blood oh, Moon, okay. I Iron see what's going Hands, on Ogre Palm Hearth. But I like this team, man. I love this team. I this hate when he gets to see his teams. I hate it. Oh my god. I absolutely hate it because all he does is talk about the Furgraph the entire time. I love Furgraph. Let's see what Furgraph is running. Citrus Berry. And that's probably a good bet. It's probably good to go for the Citrus Berry, to be honest. Another way that you can go for it, too, is uh, put a lot of uh, resources, a lot of EVs into your special attack. Go for it. Throat Spray. There's two kind of ways you can run Frigraph. Oftentimes, you do see the Citrus Berry, mm. like, sort of defensive side more often than you do see the uh, special attacks, the Throat Spray sort of, uh, you know, side of things. But two good options. Even still, um, it, it's still like super uh, detrimental to have Frigoraf on the field too. Still a high special attack, even if you don't invest too much into it. Uh, so we'll kind of see how things go. But I am curious, your thoughts on Iron Hands? This a Pokemon we don't see very commonly, but, or at least we have Iron here. Hands too. Yeah. That, okay. Well, yeah, that's, that's, that's sort of fine. Yeah. But yeah, um, anyways, uh, Iron Hands, not something you see too, yeah. too often. Uh, you saw it a lot in like early formats. Uh, when it's regulation, a stellar type as well. Stellar type. Uh, these stellar types are... So confusing to me sometimes. <laughs> um, but uh, Iron Hands was a Pokemon you kind of saw in the beginning formats, like Regulation mm. B. I, I think it was Regulation B when Par Paradox Pokemon first became legal. Um, so that was like, you know, it was a good fake out user. So it was one of the first, especially since it was before Rillaboom and Incineroar came, came out. But since those two Pokemon have, you know, came into the format, I've obviously been dominating the format. You haven't seen Iron Hands come in too, too much. So it's still nice to see that sort of Iron Hands come back in. It is a more niche pick. It's also a more Trick Room based pick. Yeah. Because it is a very, very slow Pokemon on the field. One right? of the slowest. One of the slowest. So if you do bring it in with a Frigraph, say like a Frigraph or Saluna lead, you, you know, protect their Saluna, get the Trick Room off, you bring in the Iron Hands, and it's just sweep time. You know? Uh, I'm just noticing something here on Zane's team. I It is a Pelipper team with the Drizzle. But I'm not noticing any form of like lightning or or whatever thunder thunder. thunder. I'm not yeah. seeing anything that really capitalizes off of rain on this team. Like again, this at is all. a second team that we've seen that brings in the Pelipper that can't really capitalize off of the rain at all. No thunder, 
right? No water types that end up, you know, capitalizing off of that rain. So it's very interesting to see, like, you know, why he, they're bringing Pelipper. Obviously, it's to do with the wide guard. The wide guard is a super, super good protective mood, mm -hmm. especially because you don't have to commit the protect onto any of the other Pokemon, especially if you think that they're going to do, like, you know, widespreading moves. If you look at Diego's team, Diego has Ursaluna, who wants to click Hyper Voice most of the time if they're not going to one-click, or like, you know, Blood Moon. They have Ferrigraph, who also wants to click uh, Hyper Voice as well. If you do bring out the Pelipper and get the wide guard off, that's still a pretty good uh, turn. And then you can utilize the next Pokemon to not protect and then, you know, go for an actual move. Um, it's pretty much just a wide guard Pokemon. And I guess it can set like, up yeah. Tailwind. It does have Tailwind as well. So it is its Tailwind setter. Um, but it also has a Torninus Incarnate. So it has two kind of Tailwind setters. It just kind of depends on where they want to sort of lean into. I, it's it's I interesting. Yes. Sure. I just, yeah, I mean, I'm sure if the whole point of it is the wide guard. I'm sure there's better wide guard users. I'm not sure what the the idea behind the Pelipper is, unless it yeah. really is just to counter sun or like snow, having your own weather. Like this is a legitimate strategy. You know, I spent like maybe like 20 minutes talking about it on our first stream here, like just being able to consistently break weather with your own weather. But usually, you at least have some form of playing into your weather. Right here, we don't see that. Here we at don't all. see that at all. Period. So it is interesting um, seeing the Pelipper coming out. Uh, maybe we'll be able to see exactly why it's useful. Uh, I would love to see what the strategy behind using this Pelipper is and how both players want to play around it, if it even gets picked up at all. Again, bring six, but you only battle with four, so we might not even see it uh, to in the first place. But uh, an interesting Pokemon nonetheless. And I can hear some intense music coming out. We are starting the battle out strong. We're going to lead with the Iron Hands and Tornadus on the side of Diego. And on Zane's side, Tornadus Ish or Urshifu going to lead us out. Owen, what are your thoughts on this first? These right are pretty there. safe leads. You're not really leaning into anything specifically. Um, so you don't want to like necessarily go for the trigger right now with like the for graph or whatever on uh, the side of Diego. And you're not, like this. This is a pretty safe standard lead, right? Both Tornadoes are probably going to go for the Tailwind. I, I think Zane is opting to go for Bleak Wind Storm instead, uh, which makes sense. You know, get the damage off. Um, but we'll kind of wait and see. I'll okay, kind of wait and see what happens. The Terra, Terra does come out just pretty much right away. Yeah, immediately. It's going to be going on someone here. Not quite sure who it is just yet. We're going to see the ghost type Ooh. Urshifu coming into play. That could block out the fake out coming out from the Iron Hand. Tailwind is going to start up. But if Tailwind comes out... Oh, okay, yeah. The Urshifu is going to U-turn out. Okay. So... Yeah, it's going to come out there. Mm -hmm. The ghost terror typing, I'm assuming, again, was to block out any uh, fake outs coming from the Iron Hands. Yeah. I'm not sure if that did end up coming to play at all. It, it did. Just... The Iron Hands did go for the fake oh, okay. out. So, cool. you know, it did block out the fake out for sure, which is, it's smart. But now you've committed your terrestrialization, and now they know for sure that you have no way of, like, terrestrializing later. So there's no form of, like, defensive terrestrialization that you're, like, worried about if you're Diego. If you're Diego, that is uh, amazing. Uh, Terra for you, for sure. Yeah, and getting that Terra off, again, just even seeing it and knowing what it is, that's huge information for Diego to play around. And uh, Zane's kind of shown his hand a little bit. But, as uh, I'm realizing now, the Bleak Wind Storm can't miss in rain. I think that might be a big part of the utility behind the Pelipper. Yeah, uh, I guess I, we weren't even thinking about that. Yeah, so. I didn't know. You you knew. I didn't. Okay, so I didn't know that Bleak Wind Storm can't miss in the rain. Just checked it now. So that alone is actually a huge reason to run the Pelipper now that I'm seeing it. Uh, with a wide guard coming out next, that could block Ooh. out the Bleak Wind Storm coming out from Diego. Uh, whether he's going to go for it. No, he's going to go for a taunt onto Zane's uh, Tornadus, which he's probably not going to come too much into play because of the Bleak Wind Storm, right? Yeah. Yeah, I guess, though, you're right. Yeah, the taunt doesn't really do too much because the Bleak Wind Storm is going to come out. Wild Charge is going to go on Pelipper. Pelipper is now down. Now we don't have to worry about the wide guards anymore from Pelipper. And you know what? You are right. There was at least one sort of Pokemon who can benefit from that sort of rain setter. Um, so now we'll, I guess, kind of see Urshifu come out, which does sort of benefit from the rain as well, being the fact that it is a water type, even though it still gave True. up that terrestrialization to Ghost. It still gets its water stab after being tra like terrestrialized, so it still benefits. So we we were a little bit wrong, I guess. We it, even though it is like a minor rain team, it still does benefit in some way. Hey, 
You were wrong. I was uninformed. Okay, that is true. Big difference. <laughs> hey, man, I'm sick. I'm tired. Give me a break. So am I. But you know what? Pokemon unites everybody yeah. and heals us all. You know As who else does also benefit from Bleak Wind Storm <laughs> or from the from the rain being set up? Diego. Diego has tail yeah. set up right now. Zane doesn't. True. So Diego's going to move first. Bleak Wind Storm is going to connect. No wide first. guard anymore as well. No wide guard as well. Diego's Pokemon are already super weak, so the fact that they have Tailwind set up is, is just super oh, beneficial. Actually, being hit by the first Bleak Wind Storm might have reduced the speed enough. That the oh, and help. this is an amazing read from Zane. He knows that, you know, uh, Tornadus is just going to click uh, Bleak Wind Storm, get damage off the two, so he's going to go for the Aqua Jet. And just a, an amazing move from Zane right there. Yeah, very well played. Bleak Wind Storm uh, getting kind of shut out by the Aqua Jet on the Earth Shifu, and then getting kind of cleaned up on the side of Zane to clean up the uh, the Iron Hands. But Diego's own Earth Shifu coming out now alongside the Ogre Pond with this is the uh, Heart Fling uh, Ogre Pond. This is the first time we're seeing it hit the field uh, today. And you, you've kind of been uh, evangelizing for this uh, this ogre pod. What what do you think it really brings to the table? Well, it's super bulky. Uh, it, it's bulky, obviously. Like just like every other ogre pod mm -hmm. form is. Like uh, wellspring ogre pod will be a little bit more bulky because of the special defense boost. But this ogre pod can do so much damage, especially with that attack boost that it gets from terrestrializing. Something you do have to think about right now, though, is that both of Diego's Pokemon are super weak to Bleak Wind Storm right now. Sorry, real quick, I did just want to mention the fact that, yeah, uh, Zane not really having a choice. He needed to swap out the Urshifu there. Choice Scarfed on Aqua Jet. You don't want that. You've right. got to get rid of it there, but go ahead. Uh, yeah, anyways, we're going to see the Terrastalization come through. It's probably going to be on... Yeah, we're still going to see the stellar Terrastalization uh, from Diego right now onto his Urshifu. Um, like I was saying, though, you still... If you do stellar, like, uh, Terra Stellar, you still keep, you know, your typing uh, when it comes to them attacking you, right? Okay. So if they attack you... If uh, Tornadus attacks Urshifu right now, it's still going to be super effective because he's still a dark and uh, fighting type defensively. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Tornadus is going to get knocked out. Urshifu is going to pick up the KO right away. And that Bleak Wind Storm is not even going to come into effect. And the Tailwind now running out for Diego's side. Own Urshifu coming in. This one with the Choice Scarf. Mm -hmm. It really... I feel like this one's still anybody's game. It uh, really is. Just losing his Tornadus now. We got Among Us. Among Us and... Among Us. Uh, uh, <laughs> Urshifu. But this, this Urshifu is a ghost type. It now? is, and something you have to keep in mind too, that Stellar, any move that Urshifu uh, Rapid Strikes uses will be super effective to Urshifu Ghost. Mm -hmm. So for anyone unfamiliar, like me, can you reiterate what the Stellar Terrestrialization does for you? Stellar does nothing defensively, but everything offensively. Ooh. If you are a Stellar type, you will do super effective damage to any Pokemon that is uh, Terrestrialized. Any gotcha. single Pokemon that is Terrasilized. Um, so right now, he, like Urshifu can click anything, click it blow, blow, and it will 100% do super effective damage. To Rage power Urshifu though, right gonna make sure that Wicked Blow is gonna go onto the Amoongus yes. instead of the ever so fragile Urshifu. So now, just two Pokemon facing him. The Rage Powder once again going to come into play. Diego forced to take a huge surging strikes. Uh, this. He's going to take him down yeah. really low. Plus, with the Choice Scarf, plus with the next Wicked Blow Force hit, Amoongus. Zane's got this in the bag. I can't yeah. see this going any other way. Zane literally has this in the bag. There's no way for Zane to lose this game. Zane has this. The Scarf is just make, makes it so that uh, his Urshifu is way faster than Diego's. Zane has it. Zane ha has already won the game. Um, you'll probably see Diego right now just like cancel the battle because like, he's on 1 HP. There's nothing that he can do. Um, Which... Oh, but oh. Sucker Punch comes through. Oh. Does a considerable amount of damage. Again, like we said, the Stellar type does a ton of damage, right? Yeah. Obviously, as every move is super effective. Yeah. But it's not going to be enough. Zane is going to pick up the game and the first game of the set. Now, Diego right now is, is in a bad position. If he loses this game, it, it's over. It's oh, over for him. God. There's no way for him to come back like there was in the sort of Swiss round stages, right? We're in single Elim top cut. If he loses right now, it's done. So he needs to figure out some way to change up his game plan 
and then make adjustments to, you know, take down Zane in the next game. Yeah, and he's got to figure it out. Let's help him out a little bit here. Well, obviously not to help him out literally. He can't hear us. But <laughs> let's figure out what could he do for our own curiosity's sake to try to make this battle a little bit more favorable for him. As you're looking at the team sheets now, uh, also minor, but I think it's really cool that the battle came down to a rapid strike versus uh, single blow or Jifu. It was kind of thematically cool, if you ask me, but yeah. looking into the next battle, what kind of changes do you think he would, should make if he wants to win this next one? I do want to say that I want to see like the you know the Trick Room Pokemon come mm -hmm. out. We saw Iron Hands, which is, again, a good fake out Pokemon and can work out really well into Trick Room. I want to say that. But you also have Pokemon on his team, on uh, Zane's team, that are really slow. Amoongus is, has 55 speed uh, at level 55. He is a super slow Pokemon. Uh, Incineroar is also pretty yeah. slow as well, right? So it's like it's kind of a catch-22. I think in that situation, if Diego brings out, in that game specifically, if Diego brings out Trick Room, I think Diego wins that game. But it kind of just depends on what like Zane is going to bring out too. That's what makes this format, that's what makes VGC so great because you don't know exactly what your opponent is going to bring to the table. This break, this uh, like bring six, only take four mm -hmm. uh, sort of format. It does so makes, much for it. It does so much. And, and it makes VGC so, so enjoyable because you don't know. You have to make guesses every single turn. You have to make guesses before the game. You have to make guesses during the game. So it just makes everything... Just make them after too. Pardon? You have to make them after too. Yeah, of course you have to make way. them after as well. Um, but it, it's going to be very interesting to say. I, I would say maybe bring a free Raph and Ursa Luna potentially on... It, it, it kind of depends. I would lead with them for sure. Um, but I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. If they both went for a safe lead, I would say if you're Diego, you're on the back foot, you have to try and make a play. Yeah. Uh, I feel like, yeah, for Zane at the very least, Pretty flexible team. The Pelipper, we do see the utility of it. Uh, maybe even going for the Amoongus here on the Zane side as a strong leader, potentially. But as we're getting into this next battle, oh, I was, I was right. Yeah, we're going to see the Amoongus coming out with the Urshifu to start things off. With uh, we're Now we're going to see the Iron Hands Tornadus lead on Diego's side of the field. Mm -hmm. Urshifu is going to get taunted. Uh, does, does Urshifu care about taunts? Regularly? I, I can't imagine it, but... I guess not really. Surging Strikes is going to take Tornadoes down to a paltry 10%. And, well, you know... Yeah. Urshifu is taunted, I guess. Amoogus couldn't do anything that turn. Obviously, Iron Hands going for the fake out. And with Ur Amoogus holding Rocky Helmet, Iron Hands takes a little bit of damage there. Uh, but we'll kind of have to wait to see what's going on here. Amoogus is going to go for the Rage Powder. Um, Tornadus is, is super low. I don't know if Tornadus went for any... I don't think... Yeah, he went for Taunt, correct? Tornadus taunted the Urshifu. Taunted the Urshifu. Interesting. I would think that they would go for, you know... Oh, wait, this is Diego's team? I was going to say maybe they go for Tailwind, but I, I guess I'm incorrect because I, I probably wouldn't go for Tailwind, honestly, in this situation, but... I yeah. don't know. It kind of it kind of depends. I, I'm I'm oh they do go for tailwind as well. So they Perfect. probably don't have for Graf and Ursa Luna in the back in the back uh, um on the back end. Sorry. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out the taunt onto Urshifu play, but uh you know the the tornadus is eventually gonna fall. Uh, thanks fully to Urshifu's potent strikes, tornadus is gonna be out of it. Not before, not after. Rather, gonna get oh. the tailwind off, but the wild charge gonna go onto the Amoongus. It's gonna be taking a decent amount of damage to the rocky helmet. Rage powder. I was about to start raging myself. I was about to be like, "Why did you target?" Oh, I, I totally forgot about rage powder. Um, yeah, as we see, hearth flame uh, ogre pawn coming out. This is a probably this is probably the best bet right here as you're going to be able to take out the Amoongus before your Iron Hands is going to be able to attack. And then Iron Hands is probably going to be able to get the trade onto Urshifu as well. As you see Amoongus coming out, this is a good play from Zane right here. As you know, you don't want to lose your Regenerator Amoongus. Now Amoongus, when he comes back out, is going to be at full HP. Incineroar comes out, and with the clear amulet, Iron Hands will not be dropped. But Ogre Palm attack will be dropped for sure. What hammer comes through? Oh, Urshifu, but Urshifu lives on two HP. Oh my goodness! Gonna get the Ogre Pong KO as well. Yeah, with the surging strikes that come out, it's gonna get the Ogre Pong, which is is very sad for sure. Oh, he does kick. You're right. He does kick. He does like the little spinny kick. I'll I'll do it on stream for you after. Okay, go for I'll, it. I'll I'll do it. I thought you were making that up. But anyways, three KOs, or three hits is going to KO the Ogre Pond. And now it's just the Iron Hands, almost called the Hariyama. It's a completely different Pokemon. Don't get it confused. Wild Charge is going to KO the uh, 
the Archifu afterwards, though. Iron Hands is going to get damaged by a little bit of recoil, but it shouldn't matter too, too much. I feel like the second game is going by a lot faster than the first one here. Now, Diego already down just to two Pokemon, uh, and one of them is just your fake outer, really. Uh, and now you are left with the Landorus Life Orb uh, well, and do, the Urshifu coming You do out have to Diego's think, life. right? Ha holds the clear amulet, and Iron Hands is super, super strong. Like, its attack stat is super high. I think it's like base 140 or something like that. It, it's something ridiculous. So even though, yeah, it is primarily used as like a fake out user and stuff like that, its damage output is also insane. Uh, with the Landorus pick coming out here, it, it's kind of like, you know, it, it's really tough. Uh, for Iron Hands, as Landorus is going to hit first, Iron Hands is probably going to fall here. Um, Iron Hands would have played very well into Incineroar if it could have stayed on the field long enough. I guess we'll have to wait and see how this turn turns out, but um, Iron Hands not looking really good here. Iron Hands is in bad straits right now. The electric fighting type being faced and stared down by Elanderus. It's not going to be a good situation for him. But as the terrestrialization stellar typing comes out onto Diego's Urshifu, maybe you can look to get some lethal hits in over onto Zane's side of the field while preserving your Iron Hands potentially. Detect coming out to protect it from anything that the landers might throw its way. Fake out coming out onto the Urshifu, which is pretty darn bad. But realistically, what more can you really do? Earth Power going to get protected out from the uh, Iron Hands next turn. You're not really going to be able to rely on doing that. Yeah, it was kind of just a stall turn, to be honest. Honestly, if I'm in Cinema, yeah, this is going to be really annoying. The parting shot coming through. And then the double intimidate coming back after. So you're going to get a a twice a two-time attack drop which oh. is which is gonna be pretty sad for oh right now. yeah that is the play he switches out into the think of that parting shot brings back the landorus right mm -hmm. just so. think of this right because then iron hands is gonna target over right now to incineroar incineroar is gonna parting shot come switch back sides. out switch out and then go back into uh landorus incarnate Oh, but it goes before Incineroar Ooh. can get the parting shot off. I didn't know Whoa. Iron Hands was faster than I didn't Incineroar. Know, I didn't know he was chilling That's like insane. That. He's got the speed He's in He's got the sauce. I oh did my not goodness. recognize Come on, Diego. that there. Okay. Oh, it was the Tailwind. What? Oh, it's I forgot a, about the Tailwind. It's such a low-speed Pokemon, but with that Tailwind and Incineroar being relatively low Pokemon, like you said yourself, yeah. It really did matter there. I'm not sure if even they kind of accounted for that yeah. Tailwind play, because that kind of took us by surprise. It completely passed yeah. my mind and probably passed Zane's mind too. Now, now we're kind of at an equal footing, honestly, at this yeah, point. Yeah, in right a now. weird is, way, yeah. Yeah, in a weird way, where you thought that Zane for a second was going to be the one to kind of take this. Now you're kind of in a back foot, right? Both going for the double protect. This is honestly a good play as you don't know like what they're gonna do. Rage powder is gonna come through, but it doesn't really matter. This turn is just gonna be kind of stalled out. Um, unless Lando I ended up going for some setup, doesn't goes for the earth power. So it doesn't really matter too 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 much. Um, and now we'll see this turn where things will actually have to happen. Yeah, happen indeed. Rage powder coming out on Amungus' side as well. Gonna commit for that. 140 but attack is ridiculous. It, it has 140 attack. That is at level 100 to be fair. But if I pull it down to level 50, we're, we're gonna be playing in this restriction. No, that's base, That's just base oh, stats. Oh, you're at, absolutely right. That's base stats at level 50. Yeah. Anyways, Earth power comes through. Urshifu falls. Um... As we just, uh, as we forgot to talk about, Amoogus also fell too. So now we're in a 1v1 situation right now. 1v1 situation. Oh, sorry. Oh! I, oh, Amoogus didn't fall. Yeah, I just can't see him because he's, he's blocked so off tiny. the field. He's so tiny. Amoongus still alive and is going to get hurt. Iron is going to get hurt by yeah. that rocky helmet. I Honestly, still think the rage power is going to come through. It, the game is over. Yeah. Yeah. Game is over. Yeah. Zane is going to be able to take the set 2 0 and. It's very unfortunate for Diego. Diego played the game very well, and it, it was still close both games, to be fair. But um, still, Zane comes out as the stronger player and is going to be able to move on to the semifinals, and hopefully we'll be able to see Zane in the grand finals later on. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that match was just a very interesting one all around. Yeah. Especially the way it ended was so strange because it felt like things were really turning around on one second but then it kind of just petered out just like the tailwind did right which was the only thing that really mattered uh to get him back in the first place getting that uh, cheeky shot out onto the incineroar but ultimately when it came down to it you know he was able to take that one away yeah and 
win the series 2-0. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, like we said, Zane, amazing player, amazing plays. Um, you know, it was still close with Diego. Diego was still trying to make some sort of adjustments, but it just didn't end up going uh, its way. But anyways, we're looking to head to a break. But what do we have after we come back for the break? Well, one thing I want to remind everybody about is what you're coming here for. What's on the line is getting points to qualify for Worlds. And good news is somebody was able to accumulate enough points to qualify for Worlds. And that is our very own junior player, um, Brandley. He's going to be able to qualify, get the Worlds invitation, got enough points for it. So we will be able to get an interview to see what he's thinking about that. Keep in mind, I think it's uh, Worlds Juniors, correct? Yeah. 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 Yeah, World's Juniors. So we're going to be able to see him, uh, but that'll be right after this short break. And we're going to head to. So stay tuned. We'll be right back.